So the last thing that we'll do by video for this section is the notion of a smooth curve. Um, in the textbook, you probably just got to look at a few very interesting graphs of some special curves that you can obtain using parametric equations, right? And one of the takeaways you should have is that with parametric equations, you can create all sorts of really cool and interesting curves that you definitely could not generate as graphs of functions, right? Lots of fun stuff you can do. But we want to get into calculus, right? We want to start talking about things like tangents and areas and you know, all the usual things that we do when we're doing calculus. So what can we say about smoothness, right? So, so we want to have some idea of, of a smooth curve in the same sense that we do in, in, you know, when we're talking about graphs of functions, right? So a smooth curve should be one that doesn't have any cusps or any corners. Um, we do, however, allow vertical tangents because you could have a curve, right, that kind of comes around. Um, maybe it intersects itself. We do allow that sometimes, right, for curves, um, for parametric curves. Uh, these points will also sometimes cause trouble when you're looking at the equation. But we can have a vertical tangent, right? That's fine. That's still smooth as we pass through that vertical tangent, same as it is as we pass through a horizontal tangent, right? Um, but, you know, we might want to avoid, say, a curve that goes up and does something like that, right? Or has a cusp and comes around. We want to avoid kind of corners like that. Um, so how do we know that we can avoid that? So we start with, say, x is equal to f of t, y is equal to g of t, right? t in some interval i. Um, and we'll say that t, the curve given by these parametric equations is smooth if, so we ask for, there's a couple of things that we actually ask for here, okay? The first thing that we ask for is that f and g are differentiable. Um, we might further ask that the derivatives be continuous, um, but for now we'll just say differentiable. Um, and we don't want f prime of t and g prime of t, um, they will not be simultaneously zero, okay? So we don't want that to happen. And Again, if you, if you think of parametric equations as describing sort of, you know, like projectile motion, if you think of it as, as describing the position of some object that is traveling this curve, right, and you're giving the x and y uh, coordinates as functions of t, right, then f prime of t is giving you the rate at which the x coordinate is changing. g prime of t is giving you the rate at which the y coordinate is changing, right? Um, if we think in terms of like a, you know, a vector, we can think in terms of velocity. Um, we can definitely do this, right? This is... This is something you're going to start looking at in subsequent chapters. Uh, but if, if f prime and g prime are simultaneously zero, it means you're not moving, right? X isn't changing, Y isn't changing. You're at a stationary point, okay? And just like when we're looking at graphs for, for functions of, you know, just a graph of a function, right? Stationary point can be a critical point, right? It can be a location of a max or a min, things like that, right? Actually. One of the things we'll be interested in moving forward is, is, you know, we can look now at kind of max and min values in both the x and the y directions, right? We might have a kind of a local y max. We might have a local x min. We can do those things, right? Um, we'll also notice that, well, you know, min and local min max values for x might correspond to vertical tangents, right? Uh, local min and max values for y could correspond to horizontal tangents. We get a lot of that same stuff, right? Tangent, horizontal, vertical tangents, cusps, these are going to be our sort of where our extreme values occur, okay? Um, but the reason you don't want to allow simultaneous zeros here is you could have something where, you know, um, you can keep differentiable functions here. If you imagine you have something where as you approach that cusp, right, f prime of t and g prime of t, they, they approach zero. So you kind of slow down, you come to a stop, and then when you start moving again, you go off in a different direction, okay? So you can you can do that without having any sort of like 
discontinuity or abrupt change in the derivatives, right? There's no point where the derivatives fail to be defined, right? The derivatives are defined all the way through. It's just that you allow both derivatives to go to zero at the same time, and you can get that cusp, right? Um, so it's sort of the, you know, it's the, you know, it's like a smooth acceleration, right? If you think about acceleration as the change in velocity, we can slow down and then start up again. But if we abruptly change between two different velocities, right, that's, you know, that's not what we want to happen, okay? So coming to an example, somebody gives us parametric equations for a curve, and we just want to know, okay, are there any points where this curve fails to be smooth? Well, um, certainly, x prime of t and y prime of t are going to be defined everywhere, right? These are polynomial equations. We know that polynomials are differentiable everywhere. So if, if this curve is going to fail to be smooth, the only way it can fail to be smooth is if the two derivatives are simultaneously zero. So let's see if that happens, right? x prime of t, we get 3t squared minus 12. And we can factor that as 3t minus 2, t plus 2, right? Factor with the 3, we get t squared minus 4. y prime of t, we just get, let's see, we get 2t minus 4, which is 2 times t minus 2. Ah, so we can see that when t is equal to 2, we get that x prime of 2 is equal to 0, and so is y prime of 2, right? So x prime of t, y prime of t, they're both 0 at 2, okay? Um, so um, what is the point on the curve, right? What's the location? What's that point? Uh, well, now we should go back and we should figure out what the point on the curve. We go back to the original parametric equations. x of 2, x of 2 is going to be 8 minus 24, uh, plus, oops, sorry, 17. Um, that's going to come out to be 1. y of 2, let me actually put it in, right? 2. x of 2, y of 2. y of 2, we get uh, 4 minus 8 plus 8, we get 4, right? Um, so the answer here is going to be, well, it fails to be smooth at the point 1, 4. Or, I mean, potentially. Really a lot depends on the parameterization here. Uh, what you have to do now is maybe go grab your favorite graphing software. Um, GeoGebra is an easy one. You can just use GeoGebra has a curve function. Start typing curve. It'll kind of autocomplete. It'll ask you for the uh, function of t for x, function of t for y. You tell it the range of parameter values. Say t goes from like minus 5 to 5 or something. Um, and uh, yeah, ask it to plot it for you and see what happens. What actually happens at 2? Do you get a cusp? Do you get something like this? Or maybe it actually is sort of smooth in the sense of having a tangent there. It's hard to tell. Uh, all we know is, is something goes wrong with the parameterization at that point, And without plotting the curve, we can't really be sure exactly what goes on.